a little bit more complicated example. What we're going to do with this is we're going to need to get our components in the x and y direction so that we can go and get the net electric field again and draw out our vectors. This is very similar to those momentum collisions when we were colliding at angles. What we need to do is get all our x components, get a sum of the x components, get all our y components, get a sum of that, redraw, find the resulting. So this one's got quite a few parts to it. Two point charges are aligned as shown in the diagram. Determine the net electric field at point P. Well, when you look at this question, since A is positive, it'll be away from A. So at point P, we will have an electric field moving away. Now consider B. B is negative, so on a negative source charge, we are having towards a negative. So what will happen here is we will have an electric field from B in that direction. So it'll be towards the B and away from the A. What we're going to need to do is to be able to get the components of B, get all our X's and Y's together, and go from there. So what we'll do first is we'll break the electric field from B, we'll determine what it is, and then we'll find its X component and then we'll find its Y component. The electric field from A is only in the horizontal direction, but the electric field from B, let me just kind of draw it over the side, is going to be at a 42 degree angle and we're going to look for the electric field at B and we're going to need its X component and its Y component. Then we're going to sum it up with the electric field from A because it has an X component only. So when I deal with my components I'll have two X's and one Y to redraw here. So let's start with first of all might as well determine the electric field from A. That's a quick one. Very similar to what we were just doing in the last example. This is going to be K, QA, divided by RA squared. We have all the numbers. We just have to put them in the right units. The electric field from A, 8.99, 10 to the 9th. Newton meters squared over Coulomb squared times the charge of A which was 3.0 micro coulombs so 3.0 times 10 to the negative 3 coulombs divided by the distance 6 centimeters so I'm going to go 6.0 times 10 to the negative 2 meters squared so this is the electric field from A on point P. Punch that in. 8.99 to the exponent 9 times 3 to the exponent negative 3 divided by 6 to the exponent negative 2 squared. should give you a fairly big number 7.49 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 
six, seven, eight, nine times 10 to the 9 newtons per coulomb. Next thing we're going to do here is now look at the electric field from B and let's get its elect X and Y component. So the electric field from B will again be KQB over RB squared. We have all these numbers. 8.99 times 10 to the 9 Newton meters squared. Get rid of my line here. There we go. Newton meter squared over Coulomb squared times the charge. Again, don't put the sign in here. So it's 2.0 times 10 to the negative 3 Coulombs. And again, we're going to divide by the distance. 8.0 times 10 to the negative 2 squared. And we'll have the electric field from B. So we'll punch this in. And you should get 2.81 times 10 to the times 10 to the 9 newtons per coulomb. Now if they had they been just either in all X or all Y we would just draw this out. Fortunately we have components of one of these angles so we have to kind of break this up into its X and its Y component. So we're going to have to take this electric field from B do a little bit of trig on it and then we can go deal with our sum of our components after. So I'm going to go to the next slide here. Write that 2.81 times 10 to the 9. Two point eight one times 10 to the 9 newtons per coulomb. Draw this out one more time for you here. So this is the 2.81 times 10 to the 9 newtons per coulomb. What we want is its x and y component. We were given an angle of 42 degrees to work with. So let's go use trig to find the x component. We're going to go cos 42 degrees equals the x component of it over 2.81 times 10 to the 9 newtons per coulomb. So the x component will be equal to times 42 should give us 2.09 times 10 to the 9. 10 to the 9 newtons per coulomb. And if we want to find the y component, it's going to be sine 42 degrees is going to be our y component. Again, over the 2.81 times 10 to the 9 newtons per coulomb. So if you punch that in, sine 42 degrees 
should get 1.88 times 10 to the 9, 10 to the 9 newtons per coulomb. So now I have all my x and all my y components. I have to sum them up. The sum of the electric fields in the x direction, if you go back to your original diagram, I have an x component of 7.49 times 10 to the 9 from electric field A. B has an x component in the same direction as well. So I'm going to add those two together, 7.49 times 10 to the 9 newtons per coulomb plus the x component 2.09 times 10 to the 9 newtons per coulomb should give me a total of 1.88 Five seven times ten to the nine newtons per coulomb. The total in the y direction is just one point eight eight times ten to the nine newtons per coulomb. There's only one vector in the y direction. So what we want to do is now that we've got our resulting x sum, our resulting y sum, I'm going to go to another slide and we're going to draw out the total x, the total y, then we can find the resulting number from that resulting number. We can also find the angle. So I'll keep these two numbers on the next slide. My sum in the x direction was 9.57 times 10 to the 9 newtons per coulomb. My sum in the y direction was 1.88 times 10 to the 9. Remember, I also chose down as being positive. So when I draw this out, I will have the 9.57 times 10 to the 9 newtons per coulomb. I will have the 1.88 times 10 to the 9 newtons per coulomb. And I'm looking for that resulting the net electric field and then I'm going to need the angle to describe it. So let's use Pythagoras theorem to find the net electric field first. So it's going to be equal to 9.57 times 10 to the 9 newtons per coulomb squared plus 1.88 times 10 to the 9 newtons per coulomb squared. Take the square root of that result and the net electric field is 9.8 Seven five times ten to the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine newtons per coulomb. So there's our magnitude of the net electric field on this. Now we need the angle. Well, tangent theta equals opposite 1.88 times 10 to the 9 newtons per coulomb over adjacent 9.57 times 10 to the 9 
times 10 to the 9 newtons per coulomb. Second function tan of that ratio should give you 11.1 .1 degrees. And if we're going to describe this, it would be south of east. Now if we go back to our question to make sure we got the right sig digs, we've got to go back and figure out how many significant digits we were given. We were only given two in this question. So now to write my final answer, I should be writing this as my net electric field is going to equal to 9.8 times 10 to the 9 newtons per coulomb at 11 degrees south of east. Whether it's going to be at some angle or perpendicular, there's a couple of those perpendicular ones in here, you treat them the same way. Whether Just like you did in momentum. You always found total x, total y, draw out the resulting vectors, use Pythagoras theorem to find your net. Once you find your net, use trig to find your angle. They're actually easier if they're collisions at 90 degrees, just like uh, momentum collisions at 90 degrees. So when they're at some angle, you always have to find the components of that angle, which you probably remember from momentum was quite a bit of work. Well, the same stuff comes up here. Anything that's at an angle, you'll have to find its components, get the total of those components, then find your net.